up, guys, and welcome to another edition of Wrestling Pulse. I'm David Gordon Ryan. I am J-Man, and this edition of the Pulse, we give you guys our NXT TakeOver Respect uh, review, just getting off the air on the WWE Network. Um, as NXT, as what you always get with NXT, you get consistency, um, and you always get a really enjoyable show, and that's absolutely what we got here. Um, NXT seems to never disappoint um, when it comes to these big shows, and just in general. Um, we're going to go ahead and run this card down for you. Um, first matchup, uh, we had the first semifinal in the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. We had Samoa Joe and NXT Champion Finn Balor going up against the mechanics of Dash and Dawson. Yeah, uh, this was a good opener here. Um, uh, you know, the mechanics are kind of like a uh, Ole and Arn Anderson throwback. kind of throwback style um, guys. And uh, they kind of got that uh, just kind of rough and rugged kind of beat you down, work on a body part. You made it. You made a new age comparison to Carl Anderson and Doc Allos. Yeah, Club, just yeah. Really Carl comparison. Anderson and Doc Allos, kind of like those guys, a little bit more technical, maybe. Um, but rugged, rugged, yeah. But uh, these guys were pretty good, and this match was total was pretty good. Uh, Joe and Baylor, um, you know, wrestled a good match here. Kind of awkward them teaming together. Seems you could tell they really never worked together before as a team, except for this tournament, obviously. But um, for the most part, it was a pretty solid matchup. Candice got a lot of offense in and, um, you know, a lot, it wasn't really as squashy as I thought. I thought maybe Joe and Finn would get a lot more offense in, but they didn't. It was kind of split down the middle. Um, but they had a little bit of a dissension towards the end of this match where Joe went for the, was going for the muscle buster and Finn was like, no, tag me in. And like he, you know, hit the muscle buster and then hit the coup de gras. And then, um, you know, they got the pin at the end of this and, um, Finn Balor hurt his leg, kayfabe hurt? I don't know. I mean, when we get to the, the, the finals, it kind of is irrelevant why his legs hurt, but whatever. But, um, but yeah, Finn Balor hitting the coup de gras, getting the pin, and then, you know, uh, Joe and Balor going on. Yeah, solid opener here. Um, pretty much exactly what we would expect um, out of this, obviously, with Joe and Baylor moving on here. Um, yeah, can't wait to see more from the, the mechanics into the future, Dash and Dawson. Um, like we said, just a young, uh, you know, a fun young team, you know, getting in there and having that old school kind of flair to them. Um, thoroughly enjoy them. Uh, and yeah, just, uh, you know, a solid matchup kind of picked up towards the end, but Joe and Baylor moving on, uh, you know, pretty predictable finish there um, in the first semifinal matchup. Um, second semifinal matchup, we had um, Jason Jordan and Chad Gable um, going up against Rhino and Baron Corbin. Um, this one kind of slow to start, um, picked up towards the tail end. Um, we, I, I've said it numerous times over and over again, um, you know, on any, any NXT video we talk about, um, I just, I, I can't say enough about Jason Jordan and Chad Gable. They're just outstanding. Um, ever since they started to kind of mesh a little bit more, they got the matching gear, they got the whole amateur background and, um, the kind of comedic side to them and the sarcasm and that kind of stuff. Um, they were on fire tonight. Uh, Jason Jordan looked the best that we've ever seen Jason Jordan look tonight. Um, we literally just got flares of like a, a new age Kurt Angle out of him today. I mean, he, um, you know, with the, the fucking straps going down and just a, just going full fucking bore and the throwing people all over the place and the suplexes and shit and just has the look and has so much potential uh, moving on in the future. And, and I, I'm a huge Chad Gable fan as well and everything he provides as far as the promos and the character um, so them as a unit and them as a team um, could possibly be, you know, the, the the tag team of the future, in all honesty. I mean, with everything that they have and the potential that they have, um, is about solid of a unit that you could possibly find. And they haven't even been teaming for that long. So you get some, they get a little run and you get some time with these guys, um, can produce nothing but just outstanding work and um, continued chemistry that will go into the future and will be some great stuff. Um, so, uh, great stuff out of Jordan and Gable here. Um, they fucking went with Rhino and Corbin, which, judging by just on paper, um, it should have been, you know, Jordan and Gable to move on here. But then, with the total flip of the crowd, the crowd was starting to get behind Gable and Jordan over the past couple of weeks, but really were totally into him tonight. Um, just all over <clears> them. And they're chanting Gable along to, like, Kurt Angle's old theme song, which is hilarious. And yeah. uh, save, the save, save the Gable, which was great, too. Um, leave it to the NXT crowd. Um, 
but totally behind Jordan Gable. They fl almost flipped face in the middle of this match and started working more fast-paced face type, interacting with the crowd, go, you know, um, kind of going off of the crowd and feeding off of the crowd, everything that they were doing in the ring. Um, it just looked like something that was going to progress and then you know, see them move on to the finals. And they cut it short and they go with fucking Ryan on Corbin and you get the, the predictable matchup of the obvious heel team against the obvious uber face team and it was just ugh. um it could have been so much more judging by what we got we would have wished to see dash and dawson versus jordan and gable in the fucking finals to give us a, a fresh um a fresh look and uh a fresh feel of what the future is going to hold for the tag division because that's going to be great stuff with those kind of guys in the future that can do great stuff in nxt and, and moving on to the main roster but um this is as upset I was with an outcome in quite some time for any product and for anything on WWE and any standards. I like you start to get invested in these guys and these young guys, and you want to see them get their opportunities and stuff like that. Not saying that these guys won't have their chances down the road, but this was a a perfect opportunity with the bigness of of how this tournament has felt, putting Dusty's name on it, uh, doing the whole introductions with the trophy and everything, and having Cody and and Dustin come out and introduce it. This is a huge stage to really make a team. Um, you know, a Joe and a Baylor, you know, obviously moving on towards the tail end of this, isn't going to be something that's going to be going in the future. These guys, uh, Jordan and Gable, are going to be going in the future and going to be a great team for, you know, hopefully years to come uh, and stuff moving on in the main roster. So this could have been a moment here. So this is a really um, poor decision, you know, on both of our parts that WWE made, or WWE made here um, and, and going with Rhino and Corbin throwing in the, into, the, into the finals and just set up for an easily predictable outcome. Um, in the finals here. So I'm really disappointed that that uh, Jordan and Gable didn't get the win, but Rhino and Corbin getting the win in, in a match that picked up towards the tail end. I don't think it really got it to the point of, you know, Joe and Baylor's matchup with the mechanics, which it was, and then again, it kind of was pretty much right with it, but um, just kind of left a bad taste in your mouth when, when they didn't go with uh, Jordan and Gable getting the win. But Rhino and Corbin moving on to the finals in that match there. Yeah, uh, Jason Jordan and Chad Gable are, are excellent. Um, they're um, definitely uh, world's greatest tag team, too. Yeah. Um, you could even see like shades of them even being better. Um, you know, literally, Jason Jordan is like Kurt Angle and Shelton Benjamin combined with the size of a Brock Lesnar. And that combination is just freakish and just... Deadly. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just a blank canvas. And this guy, like, he moves around well. He's good in the ring. He's energetic. He's happy yeah. to be there. Yeah. Like... Great work ethic. Great work ethic. Like you could yeah. tell, he he's 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 excellent worker. Yeah. Chad Gable too. You you get yeah. you get the vibe from both these guys. Like hey, we don't want to just be sitting in the back and you know if we, if we got to be a tag team for a while and get over as a team and you know people to see how good we are as a team then that's what you know you have to do. And uh, uh, him them them winning here was probably what should have happened. Um, I know they kind of were just getting they just been getting a push over the last month or so um, as a team, but. I mean, there's no reason the crowd was so behind him here. Um, the mechanics looked good too, so I feel like it it it, it should have been. Uh, you guys, you could have went with Joe and 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 right. Baylor here, but maybe you know Gable and, and Jordan winning over and Joe and Baylor could be too big, right. too soon, and maybe it's too big of an outcome uh, early. But you know, who knows? I don't know. But um, these guys look great, and uh, going in the future, uh, these guys are definitely going to be uh, a contenders for the tag titles. I, I can see that coming. Right. Next matchup, um, we had the debut of... We didn't even talk about Rhino or Corbin, like, about them, like... Is it worth they, it? They were okay. They were there. I mean, Corbin still looks like a whatever. But, I mean, I'm just saying, like, they won the match. We didn't even mention a word about them. We were just so on board with Jason Jason Jordan. That's Jack really Gable. the only endearing quality of that match. Rhino shouldn't be on NXT. There. Rhino shouldn't be there at all. But, oh, yeah. They it's... should put just, just Sammy, uh, what is it, Sammy Callahan, but what's his Solomon name? Crow. Solomon Crow. But Solomon Crow with Baron Corbin. That at makes push a younger guy up onto right. this tournament. Like, right. do they need Rhino for the viewers? God forbid. No. Right, people are watching because Rhino was on the show. No. Everything we got out of that match was Jason Jordan, Chad Gable, and the immense future that they could have. Um, you know, going forward. Um, next up, we had the debut of Asuka going up against Dana Brooke. Um, I guess you can talk about that one first. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, this is awesome. Uh, anybody who's seen uh, Asuka when she was Kana uh, in Japan knows exactly how she works. And uh, I've seen some, quite a few matches of her over the last several years uh, through the grapevine. Oh, you got to see this match. Or you got to see this match with Kana. Or just, you know, through um, social media and different things like that. And um, definitely, if you know who, uh, obviously, H Hideo Tommy is, is Kenta, uh, is pretty much a female version of, of her and of him, actually, I'm sorry. But 
um, I was con uh, not concerned, but interested to see kind of how they were going to go about this, if they were going to let her kind of be herself and kind of just go out there and do whatever she wanted. Literally felt like she just pulled her from Japan and just said, go. Uh, and that's kind of how you got to do some of these guys, like Joe and, and some of these guys, where you don't, you don't just come in and try to just screw them all up and, and change them as, as wrestlers or, you know, people in general um, to make them fit into your product. you got to let them mold into your product. And where the, the, the level of the women's division is right now, um, Asuka fits in perfectly in this match against Dana Brooke. Um, I thought it was going to be a complete squash, and it was it was kind of a back-and-forth battle for a while, but Asuka got most of the offense in, and she did a lot of kicks, strikes, submissions, you know, suplexes, kind of the Japanese strong style uh, of, you know, what's going you know going on right now. And I feel like um, once they kind of get her mo moving in, in, in NXT and going, um, the matches we're going to see in the future with her and, and the Sasha's and the the Baileys and all those, and then when the main roster, when you have, man, you're going to have a stacked women's roster, because you even got some girls on the on the, the NXT roster that are still, Alexa Bliss is pretty talented for, you know, um, I've seen, Dana Brooks really not that bad of a worker, Emma's not that bad either, um, even Marie needs work, but obviously, uh, but you know, with all the talent you have right now on the main roster, and then NXT, and then with Asuka coming in, it's just like, you have a who's who of, of great women's talent right now, and um, this match here is just kind of a, a foreshadowing of, okay, Asuka gets the win here, and you go on to the main event and see what happens there. You could definitely see a, a hookup of, of some of these, these ladies here in the future. And, um, I thought it was great to just see her go out there and just, just whoop ass and you know show to the American fans exactly um, how she is, is exactly the female version of Kenta. Yeah, they basically, and that's one thing that I was looking for to see if they kind of would tone her down a bit. Um, as far as as everything goes and the style that is, you know, over in Japan and how even the women work over there, um, they didn't take anything away from her and they didn't have her restrained, it seemed, at all. Um, it was full bore, everything that you would see her do over in Japan, brought over to, you know, the, the American fair and pace. Every, yeah, the, the gear, the entrance, the look, the feel of her character and everything. Um, and I, I mentioned in the preview that I did... Um, how you need that just badass like you need that to be because it, it's everybody looks at the divas division as the, the barbie dolls and this and that and it's had that reputation over the years and obviously it's starting to get changed with the whole you know divas revolution thing and everybody trying to you know show them as the athletes that they are not just as the the looks and everything uh, but you need that badass that's just like i don't who gives a show what she's gonna look like she's gonna go out there and fucking murder one of these yeah. chicks um, and this is a perfect display of what, you know, kind of the style that she'll be able to bring, um, you know, to the women's division in WWE and what she'll be able to provide for that, which is that badass vibe of somebody who could just go in there and just beat the shit out of you. Um, and, and then will make the other women that are in there feel fearful of her to fucking and uh, of her and to be in there with, you know, in a match with her. Um, so I think they, they displayed that great. Um, and one thing we, we thought of a lot of these that, that could have been, you know, pretty much just glorified squash matches. They gave it, uh, you know, a decent amount of time for her to go out there and showcase what she's got. Uh, they gave Dana Brooke a little, you know, chance here and there, but they didn't make it to where it looked like she was gaining an advantage on Asuka at all. It always seemed like Asuka was in control of this, which was good. So they gave it time to kind of at least come to fruition and, 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 and showcase what she's got. And it wasn't like a little two minute thing where she threw a kick and threw around and pinned her in two seconds. They actually got to see what she was about and stuff. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, this is really just a sign of things to come and, and what, um, and just how stacked the roster is going to be for the women. Um, you just hope for a lot of these people not to get lost in the shuffle with how much talent there really is. Um, you just, hopefully they could, they could, um, utilize them all in the correct manner and they all get their, you know, their, their chops and get their time and stuff like that and it all works together to help the division and not to help one person or this or that um, in any particular fashion just help the division in general and she is a huge help to the division and a huge asset um, to this roster and, and you know can't wait to see what happens in the future with Asuka um, next matchup uh, we had Apollo Crews going up against Tyler Breeze um, obviously Apollo Crews coming off his debut um, back at the uh, TakeOver Brooklyn show um uh yeah this was actually pretty good um they they gave it a, another one that like just like the the oscar match where we thought it was pretty much just going to be a glorified squash um they gave this some time you know it actually got to the point where some false finishes on breeze's side um Cruz put in you know obviously his most effort that we've put in uh, that he's put in you know to date 
um, basically just being in a bunch of squash matches on, on a weekly show. Um, Breeze put in some good work. We never doubt his working ability. We just kind of doubt his, you know, character that we've seen time and time again. Um, and the fact that it's just getting stale. But another person that needs to find a character or figure something out, which is Apollo Crews, because we can't just have the fucking goody two-shoe, smiling face, big, bulky, athletic guy that's just, hey, I'm glad to be here. I'm Apollo Crews. Bleh. Um, we're going to have to find something, or he's going to have to figure out something and get something going with that. Um, but Apollo Crews getting the win here. Again, a little bit more work than we've seen him as of late and produced you know, a decent little matchup here with Tyler Breeze. Yeah, I'm really hoping that uh, he doesn't – he isn't um... – um, he isn't Neville too, basically. Um, Neville was a great worker. He never really developed a character. He kind of, he, I guess, he kind of has a character. His 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 mystique about him, where he's kind of a high, superhero high flyer right. guy. Um, that's just not going to work for Apollo Cruz, honestly. Um, he can get in there and have some incredible matches, do some incredible things. But um, man, he is he is just gonna he is gonna get eaten alive by. The, the WWE crowd, like, if he gets called up and he has no gimmick or sn some kind of something going on with him, they're just going to be like, what? what yeah. is like, that's the thing. Like, if you don't come in, if you come, like, if you come in with a, some an overblown, ridiculous gimmick, like, you Adam know. Adam Rose. Yeah, Adam Rose or, uh, Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas or, or even, uh. Um, the Ascension. <laughs> yeah, The Ascension. Uh, what's, uh, Tyranna, not the Tyranna, I was going to say Tyrannosaurus what? Rex. Uh, Funkasaurus, Funkasaurus, where you, you, you <laughs> I don't know, uh, I was going to say Tyrus, because that's, that's his name, that's his name in TNA, TNA yeah. right, uh, coming with a gimmick that's overblown, and, and it's just, they should make him the Tyrannosaurus Rex, <laughs> Tyrus, <laughs> the, Tyrus, Ty, the Funkus, Funka Tyrannus Rex, I don't fucking know, Tyrosaurus, Tyrus, Funka Tyrosaurus, Total Nonstop Rex, <laughs> Tyrus nonstop action, um, yeah. But uh, there has to be something for him. Um, he he had a different finish here. We've been saying over the last couple of weeks, you you're just not gonna, you can't win matches with just just a standing moonsault. No. That looks that's nothing. Especially when he, when he has the physique that he has, and he's not even utilizing it to have his finish. Right, right. So he had some kind of weird um, like backdrop Shift, swinging power bomb. Power bomb. It was it was cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're 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 just not gonna be a nice guy, nice guy, Paul Cruz. Like you you uh, you might have screwed the pooch on this one for for NXT because um, a lot of times, I mean, they kind of maybe they they bull rushed his 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 come in too quick, and uh, he's and he, he doesn't get booed. And he, but he doesn't get cheered. Yet. Well, he doesn't get booed yet, but yeah. he doesn't get cheered. Right. He doesn't cheered. have a reaction. He doesn't have a reaction in the NXT crowd. And you know, it's only been a little bit of time. Right. But the fans have seen what he's like, and right. um, you know, and he's just a guy. And um, right. unless you're Kevin Owens, where you play that I'm this guy and that's how I am, yeah. he's not like that. He's kind of a I'm super nice guy. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. The fans are just kind of probably going to turn on him eventually. Yeah. But. Hopefully we'll see something happen with him. So a uh, decent match here with uh, with Tyler Breeze and Apollo Cruz. Like you said, they gave him a, a decent amount of time, and um, Tyler Breeze kind of you know kicking out of stuff and you know not just taking spots and kind of reversing stuff. So it gave him a little more of a challenge. So we'll see. Right. Next up, we had the finals of the Dust Road Tag Team Classic. We had Samoa Joe and Finn Balor going up against Rhino and Baron Corbin. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Uh. I just. I just wasn't feeling this match, and it wasn't bad. I just, I don't know. I felt like this, this culmination of the the finals of this should have been tag teams, teams that are tag teaming. Like neither one of these guy teams are gonna probably stay together after this. Yeah. Um, and it to me, it just felt like, well, we like Baron Corbin, uh, we want to do something with him, and Rhino's a name, and then we got Joe, he's a name, and Finn Balor's our champion. So we don't want to just kind of, you know, run them off there. Let's just have them be in the finals and then have a predictable finish with, you know, Baylor and and uh, Joe. and Joe. Because I feel like it had to be faces winning, just because at the end, you know, here uh, they had uh, Cody and and Dustin and Hall's whole family, the Rhodes family, come in there and all that, and they do the whole, um, you know, giving them the trophy, presenting the trophy, and all that stuff, and and it was a good moment. So, you know, Joe, Joe and Baylor won here, and it was, uh, they could have kind of did the same exact thing with the 
the the muscle bruster coup de gras, which which kind of confused me because in the first match there seemed like there was some dissension in the at the end of the first match, but then at this one they were completely on, everything was fine. Uh, Baylor's leg hurt a little bit, so maybe he did really tweak his ankle a little bit. Otherwise, what would be the point? Like to set it up to make it seem like there was going to be some kind of turn. As soon as uh, the Rhodes family got in the ring and, and Cody cut a little promo thing about his dad or whatever, and then they kind of gave him presented the the trophy. We just was sitting there, we're like, there's just not going to be a turn. It's just it, the moments to is not right. It's Dusty Rhodes, you know, kind of right. thing, and it's the family's there, and it would be kind of crush the moment. So the face is winning, and it the the end and the pre presentation makes a lot of sense, and I and I get it, but. Um, I don't know. I just felt like it, it was just kind of, kind of forced, and it kind of just didn't, it just didn't feel right. Um, it was cool and that they did it, you know, with the faces, like like I said, and 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 had them come in there. But to me, I I just didn't like it. It just felt not right. You know what I mean? I just not not like there's just some kind of vibe about it I didn't like. Uh, it just felt off putting. Yeah, that just same feeling. I just wasn't feeling this at all. It, just from the start, it just I just still had the the bad taste in my mouth from you know Jordan Gable not moving on um, with Rhino and Corbin. You just knew what was going to happen. You just there was no reason to give any effort of care when you, you when you knew what the outcome was going to be. You knew fucking Corbin and Rhino were going to be sitting there with all the Rhodes brothers posing next to Dusty's fucking thing when they're getting booed out of the arena because no one gives a shit about them. You knew what was going to happen. It was a predictable outcome. The match was whatever. Um, and yeah, having, having the, the moment, it was almost just, uh, uh, a, it was almost like a, just a moment for Dusty and the Rhodes yeah. family more than it was for this tournament. Honestly, it was just more yeah. to get over how important Dusty has been to NXT and how important he has been to these guys. And, and to me, I think Dusty would have been like, Hey, why don't we have Dash and Dawson and Jordan and Gable be in there? Cause those guys yeah. are going to be the future of the, you know, this tag division. What are these guys? Like Ryan was saying are not even going to be tagging next week. Um, when you have probably, you know, Joe and Baylor go off and feud for the title and Rhino isn't even seen again and Corbin does whatever the fuck he's doing, uh, riding around on his motorcycle ch chasing wolves around the woods or whatever. Hope he doesn't get lost in the woods. New Day reference. New Day, there it was. Boom. Um, did we mention that main event segment on Raw yet? Dude. Good shit. Mm, New Day. Good shit. Good job. Good shit. Um... Yeah, just I just same same wavelengths as him. I just was not thinking this at all, or not feeling this at all. Um, it just yeah, just had a bad taste in my mouth as soon as the the, the first semi or the last semifinal was over with Jordan Gable, and I was just like, yeah, I just don't even give a shit. We know what's gonna go down. We know they're not gonna do a turn with Joe and Baylor whenever they have all the roads in there. It just kind of is what it is. It's a it's a nice little thing that they're doing for Dusty, and maybe it's a thing that they continue into the future. They got a whole legit trophy or cup or whatever the fuck they're calling it. Um, and thing they were doing there, and it was cool to see, you know, Cody and Dustin, and um, you know everything that obviously Dusty is, has done for NXT, and it, it was played a huge role in that. So kind of a cool moment in that regard. But as far as the outcome of really what was going on with this whole tournament, um, it just kind of was. It almost you could have foreshadowed everything when it first started. When you look at the the two biggest names that are on NXT or that are in NXT teaming together in the tournament, the obvious favorites, and then go on to win it and have the little kind of cheesy moment or whatever at the end. It was just all really predictable, and it was just kind of, eh, whatever. Um, can we mention the? Can we mention the just randomness of the, of the crowd, the people? They had Kevin Nash in the crowd, yeah. just like like seven rows back Next by this some random dude, just like random dude, was like dude. hooking on. He then, wasn't even in the first row. Yeah, he was, he was in like the like, fourth row. And then they also had uh, Hideo Itami, Hideo, Hideo Itami, Itami, Hideo Itami, yep. and Funaki sitting next to each other, just chilling. Like not even in the front row either, just like <laughs> way to the back somewhere. <laughs> What the hell? Was there another person? Or no, they, they had all the divas out And then there. they had, yeah, so they had Lita, um, Charlotte, Charlotte, Becky, Stephanie. and then Stephanie sitting yeah. in the front row for the main event. Right. So it was it was cool, but yeah. it just was kind of random. It was. It just was like, the Nash what? one was really random. Yeah. They were just like, is that Kevin Nash in like the eighth row over there? Like, what the fuck? Aren't they just, I feel like they're trying to just make, like, make everything seem so big. And like people care about NXT. Yeah. They're like they the just, veterans Like the stuff. whole... The finish with the dusty stuff, with the tag match, and then having Joe and Baylor win it. I think they just wanted to make it seem really yeah, big. And we'll get to the other one that makes yeah. it seem like it's Ooh, really big, it too. Was out Holy there. shit. Um, next match up, we have the main event with a 30-minute Iron Woman match uh, for the NXT Women's title with uh, champion Bailey going up against Sasha Banks. Obviously, really looking forward to this after their yeah, you know, match of the year candidate fucking 
um, the Brooklyn show, and in our eyes, and uh, apparently a lot of people's eyes, the best women's match in WWE history, um, which was pretty much nailed and stamped on that uh, with how great it was. Another thing we have to mention, if you guys have not had the WWE Network and have not checked out that WWE 24 behind the scenes of um, the TakeOver Brooklyn show, go out of your way to check that out. Yeah. Um, it's great. Um, WWE's production level is just bar none the best, and everything that they do um, is great, and it comes off... Um, just awesome. It's just it's a really great show, and you'll just have to check that out to see all the kind of behind the scenes stuff and everything they do with Bailey and Sasha and all that kind of stuff. It was great, so definitely go out of your way to check that out. Um, and really made for a great lead into this matchup, uh, the build to it and everything, the airing it you know week before and and all the promo packages there before. It very reminiscent of you know what you saw the promo packages in the in the very first Iron Man match with Sean and 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 Brett showing the training and the working out and stuff like that, playing the the, the music in the background and stuff like that. It was kind of a cool lead in. Um, the video package was all was all great. I know they finished it on this past NXT Weekly episode too. They they ended the show with that too. So really, it got the bigness out of this. Um, had to mention Bailey dressing up as Iron Man in her Iron Man colors and, and gear and everything, which was kind of cool. I didn't catch it at first, and I was like, oh, Iron Man. I was actually I thought she was dressing up like somebody that was or had her attire geared towards somebody that was in an Iron Man match, not legit Iron Man. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I'm um, showing her the nerdy side. Um, yeah, and getting in here, uh, this really, to me, this it actually went by really quick. Yeah. Um, where the, the takeover, the Brooklyn uh, takeover matchup, I think it was like maybe 20 minutes, not even 20 minutes. Um, and, and it just, to me, it that, that match just told a better story. Yeah. Um, and and it's, not, it's not anything to their work and their effort uh, because it was great, as it always has been. Um, they always put on great work, and they always produce the effort that's needed in, into a great matchup, which this was. Um, but to me, I just think they were a bit hindered by the gimmick. Um, I thought that in the preview. I thought that the Iron Man gimmick, um, when you when you don't have the surprise of near falls and pinfalls and stuff, when they're just kind of lackadaisical. I know we had one. It, 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 granted, it was like 10 minutes in. Normally in a WWE match, it's like fucking four minutes in and you get your first fall or two out of three falls, whatever the case may be. But um, to me, I just felt like it's it just a bit hindered. I don't, I don't know why. I just think it was the gimmick. I'm usually a big fan of the Iron Man match. It's just fun to see people go out there and just work for a, an extended period of time. But sometimes you just kind of get it just kind of takes away a bit. Um, but it has nothing to do with what, what Bailey and Sasha did in this match. They put on great effort. They, they told a great story. Uh, everything that Sasha did, um, everything, you know, healing it up with the, the little girl in the crowd that's the super uber Bailey fan, taking her fucking bow and shit and having it, you know, putting it in her hair and, and throwing uh, Bailey into the, the little graphics monitor thing or whatever and, and getting up in this little girl's face and act like she's crying and shit and the little girl's just bawling her eyes out and, so and, and her dad's arm. It's great uh, playing that heel up and it's cool that they still in this day and age do that kind of shit where they play up to the fans, especially without this little girl's like becoming a, a she's got fans of her own probably. She's always in the front row for Bailey. She's met Bailey tons of fucking times, those kind of stuff. So I think that's cool that they tied that into there and, and played up Sasha's heel, which is great. Um, Sasha's great. Everything she does, her character, everything, gimmick and everything. Um, like I said, got the first fall. Um, I think it was like an eye rake and then a roll up for Sasha. And it was like 10 minutes in or so. Uh, Bailey quickly got it back. She did the Bailey to belly and got that back. We had the count out, I think, spot. Uh, where she threw her into the, the video board mm -hmm. and then did the count out spot and then she got it back. I can't remember how. Um, uh, she she just, she had some. Uh, Sasha was in control and then Bailey rolled her up and caught her on a sneak of pin. Okay, then another one. Okay, so that yeah, and then she tied it up um, and then got towards the tail end of this matchup. Um, Sasha had the bake statement on for about the good last two minute portion of this matchup. Um, Bailey they had the reverses where they they kick that kick off the ropes and Bailey would do her own low cross face and then Bailey finally got her in a little like underhooked arm thing, grabbed her other arm and, and pulled that back and um, it was as it was counting down like three, two or something like that and then Sasha gave up. She couldn't tap because both her arms were locked up but um, gave it up there. Um, all in all, it was a great match. Uh, it's it's really awesome, and they pulled it off effortlessly. It didn't really seem like we were saying, you know, given the 30-minute time you know, slot, um, if, if they would be able to pull it off right. I think they, they um, towards the beginning of this, I think the first, like, five minutes or so, it was a lot of, I wouldn't say wasting time, but it was a kind of a lot of saving time for them later in the matchup. Uh, they are doing a lot of little stare downs and the, and the tie up and then break off and play with the crowd and pander and shit, um, which is pretty predictable. 
um, to see them do that. But really, they effortlessly got through this. I think we set, had a, a, a reversed out of a reverse Rana off the top rope, too. They did the same spot that they did the TakeOver show, but uh, Sasha got out of that, I think. They hit her um, with a Bailey to Bailey. And hit her with a Bailey. Sasha to Bailey. Sasha to Bailey. There you go. And she did another one of those. Uh, Bailey caught Sasha off of a dive to the outside and did the Bailey to Bailey on the outside, which is a great spot. Yeah. Um, they did some stuff with the. Um, the ring steps and O'Bailey did a jump off the clothesline deal and they did a like kick back into the inside of the thing so I mean they were all over the place here I mean they, they definitely they went up the, the ramp and shit so I mean they got a lot of their same spots in that they did in the takeover show I noticed that they did the little Bailey little jump off rope elbow thing and Sasha was going for the the knee stomp with Bailey hung up on the ropes and stuff so the same predictable spots that we've seen in a lot of them but I just had that feel of um of how great of everything just clicked for that Brooklyn show. Uh, and the time was right. The atmosphere was great. The crowd was great. The, the bigness of it, the feel of it, being in that huge weekend that was SummerSlam, uh, the SummerSlam weekend. Um, and, and the pieces just all came together um, just perfectly well. I, I mentioned Orion. It pretty much was like um, that, that Brooklyn show with, with Sasha and Bailey was almost the women's version of Punk and Cena from Money in the Bank in 2011 in Chicago. Uh, where just things just aligned perfectly right in, in their situation, and it was just a once in a lifetime type of deal. Um, granted, this was a great match. Do, do not get me wrong when, when I say that, but yeah. it's just one of those things where I, I think the gimmick, you know, brought it back a little bit and hindered him a bit. I think if they just would have had another one on one matchup, um, it could have been up to the same point of that. Not that this wasn't up towards there. It was definitely, it definitely, you know, could get up to that point. But um, I just think it was a little bit hindered by the gimmick um, and the moment. Um, you know, at, at the Brooklyn show was just, it just all met together. Um, you know, Bailey getting the win here, obviously off the submission. And then they just went, just, it went a little overboard. Yeah. Um, had the entire roster out up on the set, up on the entrance ramp. Um, they had Stephanie out there and Regal and Triple H was out there. Regal and Triple H both had, I think, Regal and Triple H, or it might have been Stephanie and Triple so, H. Yeah. Both had a huge bouquet of flowers for both of them. Sasha came out, she's like bawling, like falling over, and she's got the flowers, and Trip comes in the ring and gives Bailey her flowers like it's a fucking pageant show or something. And it just they took it a little bit too far. Um, we get what you're trying to get over. You know, we as wrestling fans wanted to see women be looked at as athletes and, and as great workers and let them go in there and produce wrestling matches and not just be ditzy, just kind of fumble fuck around for two minutes like it, like it's been for so many years. Um, when they get with an idea and they realize how behind fans are, they go too far sometimes. And this was yeah. just way too fucking much. Um, where they're like, oh my god, they're all over this. Let's just blah, 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 fucking just blow our fucking women's wrestling load here. Um, and it just, it was way too much and way too forced. Um, you cannot tell me, and there's the fucking match of the year chance and fucking, um, you know, the, the fucking amazing you deserve it chance to fucking who? I don't, she already got the title. I don't know with the whole you deserve it thing. I guess as women in general getting the main event yeah. and having an Iron Man match, that's great. Um, it's awesome to see that they got the main event spot. They absolutely deserved it. And to me, they delivered. Um, but this was just way too much. The whole fucking crowd and uh, the fucking whole entire roster being out there and just fucking bawling their eyes out again. William Regal looked like, like, he, William was, Regal looked was like he was breaking down. I'm just like, yeah, it's amazing. It's great that what they are doing with these women and they're giving them the opportunity that they are, but just a little bit too fucking far um, in our eyes. Just ah, just came off really forced and just kind of cheesy. Um, and, and it didn't take away from the match, but it was just something where it's just like, ah, that, come on now, it's a little fucking much. But good, obviously a great matchup here. Um, you know, if we get anything to come. That, to me, the end could have been a signal of, of a kind of call-off to maybe Sasha Banks, and I think her NXT run, that I would say been. she would probably be, you know, done for in NXT, um, and hopefully she doesn't get continue to be underutilized in the main roster, which has had, which it has seemed like she has been. Um, but I think with Sasha breaking down towards the end there, it could, and with how much we, you know, watching that twenty four show, how much she loves to be in NXT, it yeah. could have been something a sign of maybe you know at the end of her NXT run. Um, which, you know, obviously the, the amount of great stuff that Sasha's done, obviously, you know, breaking down that much and seeing how much she has put in to, um, you know, become the woman's wrestler that she is and, and, the, ama and the amazing character that she is. So obviously you could see that. But, um, yeah, that, that last moment, just a little too much, I would say. Um, but to me, still a great matchup. Um, 
hats off to obviously both these women, Bailey and Sasha Banks, to you know another great effort. Um, and Bailey, still your woman, NXT Women's Champion after the Iron Woman matchup. Yeah, this was great. Uh, like you said, I, I feel the same way. I, I don't think it was quite up to par with the the Brooklyn match. Um, the main thing I got from from this was uh, the match was good. They did a lot of spots they didn't do in the other one, um, and, but they did a lot of trying to recreate different spots as well. The main thing I got was um, it felt like they were trying to recreate a moment, yeah. um, and it was forced. Um, the match was good. Um, the finish was fine. The finish was good up until the bell, and then after the bell, when the bell rang, and then from that point on until the end of the show, everything that happened from that point on felt very forced and very like they were trying to recreate NXT Brooklyn, um, kind of trying to just make a moment instead of letting it happen organically. Yeah. Um, and I think the fact that it was um, not expected at NXT Brooklyn for it to be better than the main event or just the best women's match, you know, the possibility they could have um, to, to take place. And then at this setting be like, okay, we have the platform for the main event or an Iron Man match. We have to provide, we have to come out here and completely provide the crowd with what we did at NXT Brooklyn. And, and, they, and they have expectations. Right. And expectations of what the match should be like. Right. Um, the ending with the, the crowd being out or with the, the roster being out there and then bringing the flowers and that whole, mm, it was just real cheesy and yeah. real forcey, like he said, and trying to recreate uh, a moment. And I just, I didn't like it. It just felt kind of off. Um, more than anything, the one thing you'll never, um, you'll never get, or you never, you never, you're, you'll never lose with NXT is is the wrestling quality because that'll probably be there forever as long as they keep bringing new people in and try, them trying to prove themselves. Um, what I'm worried about, and uh, as soon as I say this, you'll probably agree with me, um, is bringing the WWE, too much of the WWE to NXT, and uh, don't try to make the make NXT uh, WWE light. Uh, NXT is its own brand, it's its own thing right now, and try to try to create too much of, of something that the WWE is in NXT. Just let it be its own separate entity, let it be the proving ground for the for the new and up and comers. Uh, don't try to do too much with it. Don't try to like make force things had to happen. Um, the whole Dusty Rhodes classic thing, the end of that kind of felt forced. The whole um, uh, Cody talking, and then in the pre-show, uh, Cody and Dusty talking about the th uh, Dustin talking about the the thing felt kind of forced and like rehearsed. Yeah. The whole thing felt rehearsed. It just it almost just felt like everything was just too goody good, too goody good moment. Uh, feel I wonder it. if that's just. I wonder if that's a, a a product of of what the NXT has become. Right, a product of what um, what th uh, they've almost overdone by yeah. by being so great. Mm -hmm. As far as them, like now they feel like they almost have to do that every single month type right. of thing because of how great the, yeah, the, the moments have been. Right, it's going to start to come off way too forced if you try to. Yeah. Manufacture those instead of the life that, like he said, let them happen organically. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of a lot of tonight kind of felt really forced on what they were uh, doing. Yeah. Some of the stuff that. Should but I think have... uh, one thing, that, not to cut you off again. I'm sorry, but one thing that um, you know we watched the the NXT panel, which was the one before SummerSlam. Triple H made a mention, and he said it without even being asked about it, is how he wants to make it a completely separate entity than yeah. something that is WWE. Now everything that we saw tonight was very WWE ish. Um, then again, we've never seen that happen for fucking anybody. I yeah. mean, just a, a match that didn't have somebody retiring or this or that or whatever the case may be. Yeah, maybe. they didn't have that for people it retiring. Was, I mean, either. yeah, I mean, yeah, you really don't even see that for fucking retiring or see a, a woman or a, a loser of the match being celebrated as much as, as Sasha was. Yeah, it was just ah, just very weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully that doesn't end up continuing to be a trend. Yeah, I hope they don't try to do this each takeover and try to have some kind of big moment. Um, like I said, some of the stuff that organically was taking place, the the Jason Jordan and the Chad Gable being completely over, right. um, you know, they should have just been like, let's call this audible, like, yep. let's do this, let's switch it. Um, I know a lot of times they go with something and then they just stick with it, but sometimes when you're watching something, you're just like, oh, well, the crowd's reacting this way, um, clearly this isn't working, um, we should flip it and have these people win or flip the storyline, right. and they can't do it in the middle. They should think about trying to to be like, hey, ref, audible, let's do this, let's flip it. Um, you know, and that could work in, in some situations. It could be a complete clusterfuck, too, if they yeah. mess it up. Yeah. But, um, 
but yeah, some of the stuff just felt real, real forcey and cheesy tonight. Um, they kind of did the whole, the tournament, got over Oxa, got over um, Apollo Crews. Um, the show was exciting. The matches were good. The main event was good. Everything, it just, it felt kind of forced. Yeah. Kind Everything of, outside of the quality of the work. Yeah, the and, work and the, the work was always there. Work the was there as NXT always is, it's always there, but everything that kind of was around all of the match quality, um, and all of the matches in general was just kinda of, yeah, a little a little a little forced and a little much on some parts of it. Um, but without a doubt, uh, you know, another solid show from NXT. You you always get that from as I said from the start. Um, consistency is always there. Um, and really we got a lot of consistent stuff throughout the show and obviously delivered a great main event. Um, and and you know, obviously, you know, throw everything aside, was a history-making event, you know, with being the main event with two women um, and in a 30-minute time slot for, for this Iron Woman matchup um, is a great thing and definitely great things, you know, um, a sign of great things to come. Um, obviously, if they're putting this much effort and this much time and... Um, you get a main event women's match on a WWE pay-per-view? Fucking no, you ain't never going never, never? never You guys that. think that we'll ever see a women's no. match pay, uh, made event no a pay per view no fucking way. No? No fucking way. No. You could have some higher top end matches, obviously, and things that will deliver. There's no way in hell you're ever gonna see a WWE. Charlotte versus Bailey. Charlotte is a heel, Bailey is a face, the John Cena of the women. No. Versus Charlotte, the no. mega heel. Because you're never gonna find twenty thousand seat arenas that have crowds like NXT. And that can get over the same amount of because you haven't seen the same reactions for them when they come to the main roster. It's true. They haven't the, the NXT chicks have not gotten the same well, I mean, other than Sasha. But. Another outside of being in, you know, New York or something. Right, right. You know, you're not going to see that. But, you know, I wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be a problem with it if you have the right people in there. If you have shit like this fucking delivering, that definitely can deliver and you know that they care. Because that's one thing. And another thing we didn't mention, you could just tell how much Bailey and Sasha care. They just, yeah. they, they're they they're legit fans that have been fans just like us since we were little kids. And they care so much about their future and the future of women in general in this in this business. And, that, and that's great to see. Uh, because you have people that out there that aren't dally-dicking around, that just aren't out there for a paycheck and trying to get, you know, higher up on the card, whatever the case may be. Um, they're, they're out there because they want to fucking Look work. Look at you, Heath Slater. I guess. I don't know. Just there for a paycheck. Thanks, <laughs> later. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that definitely great work, and props to uh, to Bailey and Sasha for putting on, you know, another great matchup and another solid effort. Um, so this one, I'll wrap up our NXT TakeOver Respect Review um, from my partner, Ryan. I am J-Man, and thank you all for watching another edition for Wrestling Pulse, the Pulse, professional wrestling world.